Dave Curry and the Bearcats have the challenge of the season. The top-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions come to town next on the Dave Curry Show. Channel 5 Sports presents an inside look at Bearcat football with University of Cincinnati head football coach Dave Curry. The Dave Curry Show, brought to you by... Pepsi-Cola, General Bottlers of Cincinnati, and by Cincinnati Gas and Electric, the energy service company, and by Central Trust, your financial center, and by Provident Travel, managing travel everywhere under the sun. Good morning, Bearcat fans. I'm Red Pitcher. Welcome to the Dave Curry Show, alongside University of Cincinnati football coach Dave Curry. And Dave, yesterday was perhaps the biggest challenge of the season. You've played fine teams, Alabama, Miami, Florida, Kentucky, uh, but Penn State was ranked number one in the coaches' poll, and I know that was a, a supreme challenge for your football team. Well, Red, Penn State came in uh, to play very well also. Uh, Coach Paterno had them ready to play. I thought we played awfully well and awfully hard, the, especially the first half. It was a game of turnovers. Both teams had three turnovers the first half. The second half, we came out and put the ball on the ground and kind of fell apart a little bit. Your football team, you had commented during the week, you knew they would be ready, but you were a little bit concerned uh, that they might be overexcited. Uh, did you think that was a factor going into the game? Well, we were emotionally ready, and I thought defensively we played with a lot of emotion. Offensively, it was wet. Uh, we didn't execute as well as we wanted to, and uh, uh, while we had some great efforts, uh, we turned the ball over a little too many times, and uh, you can't do that against the number one team in the nation. Well, indeed, it was wet out there, and as we see now as we roll the first half highlights, the Bearcats uh, uh, ran into a tough Penn State team but hung right in there, Dave. We started the ball game off. Uh, Reggie slips as he's running to the right. Again, it shows the wetness of the turf. But you're going to see number 30, Reggie Taylor, having such a great uh, ball game. And uh, when you turn the ball over the first series, that really puts your defense in a, in a jam. Penn State tries to take advantage, and uh, uh, nice run here by Dozier. Well, he breaks three tackles, and uh, again, they show their power running. Uh, Dozier, again, uh, this is their big fullback, and look how he runs the football. And uh, here we have Richard Rhodes uh, making a great tackle, and we stripped the ball there and had a good turnover. Now we're back on offense with Reggie running up the left side. This is McCoy making a, a throw to Jason Stargell. Stargell caught the ball as well yesterday as I've seen him catch in his career. Here's McCoy back to throw again. He strips of the ball and watch this athletic move. He picks it up again and, and then takes pays. a big hit. <laughs> uh, those Penn State linemen were very, very strong. Here again is Penn State. Look at Brad Notacker making a great play. He tackled an All-American back in an All-American way. Uh, Stargell again with a fine catch. You went to him a lot yesterday. Well, Penn State had great, here's a, a bad throw and just a bad decision. Dan got hit from the outside and it's another, these are two turnovers now that really have hurt us. Here's Dozier back up the middle. We've got poor field position here. We've turned the ball over and gives Penn State an excellent opportunity. Dozier again, Alex Gordon running him down the outside. He can go in or out, Dozier, and see why he's an All-American. This was a fourth and one play, fourth and one, and they uh, fake the inside run with a boot and executed. It's nice to be able to make those big plays like that. Here's Taylor again up the left side and just keeps running and running. Reggie had one of his better first halves. Robert Williams makes a great block up top there, and again, Taylor scampers to the right. One, two, three, four. That's uh, four people uh, tackles he broke. Here's McCoyne again to Stargell, a fine catch out of bounds. We come up for a field goal here, and this is Robert Baroni hitting a field goal in the first half, which gives us a three-point uh, score. Reggie Taylor, a, a great first half, as you said, we'll see more of him later, but Penn State back on the offense. and well, This is Dozier again running to the left side, but again, you see a lot of black jerseys around the ball. Uh, here's a, uh, a force rush by Nick, Nick Frankos and does a good job of getting the quarterback to throw the ball out of bounds. Reggie to the left side again. Robert Williams had a, a block here to the left that you'll see, and this is McCoy's scampering upfield. Again, Penn State being very aggressive. Uh, here McCoy gets sacked. The uh, man comes in from the left side, puts a move on our left side, and uh, they get a big sack. 
This was a 50-yard field goal that went wide uh, to the right, and uh, we gave the ball up here. We went for the field goal. Now it's UC on defense, and look at this. Here we go. Andre Jackson uh, picking off a pass, and Chris Asbeck had such a great block there, and this gave us a great lift and a great shot in the arm. That's a big defensive turnover. You were up 10 to 7 at this point, but Penn State uh, doesn't uh, rattle easily, do they? We've got, uh, again, uh, black jerseys flying around. Here's their All-American running back. Richard Rhodes finally makes the tackle out of bounds as John Sawyer trying to help out there. Here's a fine reception, and again, John Sawyer making the tackle. Penn State is moving the ball here. There's a big play to their uh, tight end. I well, believe. look at the pressure on the quarterback. And Brad Notacker no makes an interception. Here's a, a great high school running back. Uh, now you see him going down the sideline, tackled <laughs> by a fullback. This was a big turnover. Our defense got us the ball back, did such a good job. This is a fake reverse to the right by Taylor. Again, running, running hard, and Penn State tackling well. Look at the little guy up inside. There, there's free safety comes up here, number 22, and puts a great hit on Reggie. Reggie's a little sore today. Here's a halfback pass we went for. Uh, Al McKinney threw the ball, and uh, we were well covered, and it was one of those plays that's great if it works, and unfortunately, it was an interception, and that hurt us. Now they come back with, uh, look at that hit. That's Tony catching, making a great hit. This hurt us here, Al. They went down the field and scored here, and uh, this is a big hook up to their tight end. John Sawyer making the tackle. We were ahead here, and here they come back with a reverse and run it down to the one-yard line. This is just before the halftime, but I'll tell you what. You watch our defense here on the left side of the screen. We almost keep the guy out of the end zone. I might add that was another fourth down play there, so Penn State scores just before the half. They had the extra point, and uh, we go in the locker room. 14 to 10 is the score as the Bearcats are trailing by a four. How much of a factor was that final uh, touchdown? I think it took the uh, air out of our sails a little bit, uh, maybe more than the touchdown uh, Penn State getting, but the fact that we'd been down the 30-yard line with a good drive, and then we threw the interception into the end zone. Uh, we wanted to make big plays Saturday. We wanted to set them up. We didn't make big plays on offense like we needed to, and uh, I'd like to have that interception back. But uh, <laughs> defensively, we played awfully hard the first half, and uh, in the locker room at halftime, we talked about playing better, but as we'll see when coming back, uh, third quarter hurt us. Well, you go in the locker room down by four, and yes, you may be uh, down a little bit after that touchdown, but the players have to feel confident that you're right there in the hunt. I think they felt good about hitting and about tackling and running, and uh, it was just a big ball game. We're playing a very good football team. Absolutely. Ranked number one in the UPI poll, number two in AP, and undoubtedly number one this week. And we'll see in the second half that Penn State buttoned its chin straps and went after the Cats. All right, class, and yes? You're watching a class of bank officers no. being retrained in the latest techniques. No. But for some of them, yeah. it takes time. Will you make the loan? No. Well? But the training is relentless. And? At Central Trust, yes, you can count on friendly people who want to make loans. Yes. Central Trust, the bank that makes things happen. Energy has made everyone's life a lot easier, a lot more convenient. Revolutionary breakthroughs in gas and electric technology are now, quite simply, taken for granted. Part of our daily lives. Used properly, gas and electric energy is extremely safe. But when it's not... CG&E wants to help you learn the facts about gas and electric safety. Call 632-2500 to get your free gas and electric safety tips today. All too often, man has made claims that haven't stood the test of time. Like this. And this. And this claim from Diet Coke. Because the truth is, now there's one Diet Cola that Diet Coke can't beat. It's Diet Pepsi. You see, Diet Pepsi has more real cola taste than Diet Coke. So try it and taste the truth. 
for your next business trip, let Provident Travel make your airline, hotel, and rental car reservations for you. For corporations, Provident Travel has ticket delivery, accounting data, and computer printouts, a toll-free 24-hour telephone reservation service, and corporate hotel rate are available to all business travelers. Whether you are traveling for business or pleasure, Provident Travel has a convenient ticket branch and all right parking near the airport and $150,000 worth of life insurance. For your next business trip or vacation, call Provident Travel at 621-4900. Provident Travel, 1000 Provident Tower. Welcome back, friends, to the Dave Curry Show. Penn State comes out in the second half, uh, Dave, and you have to have the defense on the floor of the stadium. Well, we kicked off to them, and then they did have the ball coming back, but we had a terrible offensive uh, performance, eight plays and three turnovers. Uh, Penn State doesn't let you have the football, and when you do have it, if you don't uh, take advantage of it, you come up short, as we're going to see. Well, Reggie had a 100-yard first half or thereabouts, and uh, you were remarking that every time he ran to your side of the field, you were wincing as much as he was. Was he a little beat up uh, in well, the second half? He takes a lot of great hits, but he gives out an awful lot, too, and he's as fine a running back with the football as I've seen in terms of getting that extra yard. Let's see now a look at the second half highlights as the Bearcats trail by just four, friends, as we start the second half. It's 14 to 10. Red, once again, Penn State comes out the uh, third quarter here. They're running a boot to their left, and the quarterback keeps the ball and gets a good yardage upfield there to the left. That's, uh, again, this is their big fullback coming around the right corner, and uh, here again is good defense here. It's Richard Rhodes and Alex Gordon game tackling. If we could get them to run sideways, uh, we had a good chance. <laughs> this is Taylor off the right side. And now we come back with a boot to the left. Instead of bringing the ball to the corner, Dan sets up and we take a big sack here, and this really hurt us. This was the second play of the second half, and uh, we took a loss. Well, they're, here they're going around to the left side, and uh, Richard Rose comes up and makes a good hit there. Alex Gordon again uh, pursuing well. Here's their big pullback looking to take on uh, Richard here, and that's Brad Notacker, two people dragging him down. Nothing fancy about Penn State, Dave. They just keep going right at you. Well, good football teams are usually have a lot of power offense and power defense to them, so I was very impressed with Penn State because they're very sound. They're up 17 to 10 here, and the ball was a little slippery. Well, it gets loose here, and uh, not only is this play, but the one coming up is the one that hurt our back. Here's a fumble. And again, we're giving the football to the number one team in the country in our 30-yard line, and you can't expect your defense to hold them out forever. New quarterback in the game at this point. They, they did make a quarterback change there. Uh, John Sawyer making a great uh, hit, good coverage there. They run a boot to their left here, and now they get another hookup. This quarterback came in and sparked them a little bit. Uh, I think they're going to have a big decision to make next week a little bit. This is Penn State running into the end zone, and again, that was on a turnover by our offense, which again hurt us. Down 24 to 10 at this point, and they uh, seem to be uh, ready for Reggie in the second Well, half. We're, we're not executing very well, and uh, they're coming after us. Uh, here's a tough throw, great hit by their defense, and what a great defensive play by their safety coming all the way across the field. Uh, that's not great offense, but that is excellent defense. They're knocking on the door again with Big Dozier up the gut. Well, he does run hard, doesn't he? And we still got two and three people around the ball carrier. And here they get a quarterback sneak for a touchdown. And that came as a result of another turnover. We're now in the fourth quarter, and we're having to play catch up. So Penn State knows we're going to throw. Here's Robert Williams taking a little dump pass and running it for about eight yards. Again, we're playing uh, catch up football, and it makes it tough here. Here's McCoy on a good hookup here to Roosevelt Muke, our fine freshman receiver. But Penn State, you notice, just gives us the underneath passes. They really don't give us the deep one. Really impressed with their pursuit, too. They get around the football. Well, that's Roosevelt Mukes again. Uh, fine catch. Here McCoy's back to pass, and this is a good hookup. Watch this catch by Greg Latham. Isn't that a fine catch? Again, we're playing catch up, and uh, being behind, uh, Dan has got to find, uh, and this is a fumble again, uh, Steve Grunschlager makes the recovery here. McCoy back to pass one more time, Reggie Taylor blocking for him. <laughs> they've got a two-man rush here, and we, they got nine people covering this, and we take the sack. That may not look good, but at least we're not throwing the ball up for grabs and throwing the interception. That's uh, Delano Kelly making the tackle. Uh, Delano uh, 
started at uh, free, uh, strong safety for us, free safety. Delano's played both safeties and uh, has filled in adequately. Penn State still trying to get the points on the board here, up 31 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Great play by character there, and then also Terry Archer is a big part of that defensive play. Number 31 is their All-American uh, candidate, and again, uh, he doesn't let too many people get away from him. Well Here's uh, Brad Notacker causing a fumble, and I believe that's J.H. Caldwell that recovered it. Made a big play. We get a turnover, McCoy back to pass. There's a good hook up to Mukes. Uh, once again, as we look at the highlights, uh, I think our defense played awfully hard and awfully well. This is uh, Taylor around to the left side. Uh, you can't run sideways on these guys either, and they're very tough up the middle. Here's a, a pass into the end zone, and we've got uh, uh, an incomplete pass. Penn State again playing great pass defense. They keep it on the ground, and there are a lot of Bearcats pursuing. And well, it's late, and then the game's over, and I'll tell you what, there's some people in black that are still playing hard. Right Look there. at freshman Chris Asbeck there. Also, Walker uh, came in and played Saturday, and uh, I'm proud of the way our people play, as hard as they play. Look at Brad Notacker. This is the end of the game, and instead of pouting and hanging their heads, our defense is just playing hard. Man, that guy never gives up, Reggie. This is the end of the game, and Reggie Taylor's running as hard as he was in the first part. And uh, we're playing the number one team in the country. Here's Al McKinney coming around the corner. But uh, we're playing with them, and we're competing with them. And uh, while we didn't win the football game, I think we learned that uh, we can play on the field with these people, and we just need to get better. There's a fine football coach and a great gentleman, by the way. You know, you're down. They were down, what, 10-7? And they never quit. They just kept coming at you, and, you know, that's, that's an impressive defense. But, I mean, you look at the schedule. Like I said, they have not played a slot team this year. You know, they play good defense. You know, I think they squeezed out a couple games, maybe. But, I mean, you can't take anything away from them. Win's a win. Yeah, they're tough. They're sound. They keep biting at you, biting at you until finally, you know, they just we gave up the ball a couple times. Times it didn't help very good and come down to it they're just they're just good yeah they just play hard nose football they're not a flashy team they're just a hard nose football team and dave i guess that's the key to any successful football program is to play hard nosed football and have the athletes in the depth and joe paterno made uh, the comment after the game that he felt the depth was one of the major keys as far as penn state was concerned well they are an outstanding program they've got good depth they've got great tradition uh, UC is a, a fighter, and, and I was proud of our football team, and we're going to uh, get better each week. We're going to recruit better each year, and uh, we hope someday to be the same place they are. You mentioned recruit. Now, yesterday you had something like 38 to 40 young men from throughout the state of Ohio and some from northern Kentucky who were in. Last year you emphasized the state of Ohio in your recruiting as well as the, the greater Cincinnati area. These young men double the number than what you had down to a similar game last year. Well, this was the first week. Actually, we had uh, a number of recruits calling, calling us to come, and we had a lot of enthusiasm, uh, not only in the press box, but in the locker room afterwards. The thing that impressed me about our football team is the way they got beat and went into the locker room and still allowed a, a high school football recruit to come in and see what the locker room was like We've got a great spirit on our campus, and there's a lot of good things happening. There are a lot of good things happening at UC. We'll be looking at that in our next segment when we return for more of the Dave Curry Show. gas is all about clean efficient in fact america's best energy value shouldn't it be in your home nothing warms you like gas whenever i use cremettes i think of mother when she was in a hurry to get supper she relied on cremettes too she trusted cremettes just like i do mother would be amazed at all the different dishes i make with cremettes today spaghetti lasagna fettuccine linguine all made with the same care as cremettes macaroni i wonder if debbie will think of me when she grows up and makes cremettes it used to be when you went for a loan you had to bring enough papers to start a library 
But that's changed. If you come to Central Trust for a loan, most of the papers you need... Loans? ...are probably in your wallet right now. That's it. The car's yours. That's it? That's it. That's it? At Central Trust, you can count on friendly people who want to make loans. You don't need those. <laughs> <laughs> what? I... Central Trust, the bank that makes things happen. I like Pepsi a lot. Thanks, Ma. So am I happy they finally came out with a normal size bottle? The three liter. They call it the big three. 16 servings. And yeah, that's 50% more Pepsi than the two liter, which means less trips to the store. But I'd hardly call it 16 servings. I'd call it a generous three. The big three from Pepsi Cola. 16 servings. For normal sized people. Welcome back, friends, to the Dave Curry Show. I'm Red Pitcher, Bearcat football coach Dave Curry, alongside our clinic today, Dave, is the Quick Series. And uh, we'll take a look at that right now and let you uh, describe to us what goes on in the Quick Series. Today's clinic deals with an offensive series we call our Quick Series. And it basically approaches the defense with a pass passing attack where we throw the ball on three steps. The quarterback takes three steps backwards and then must make a decision where to throw the football. We read the coverage from right to left. A quick pass to the right or a quick pass to the left. This is our quick series. The quarterback drops back three steps. He reads the coverage. If it's a strong coverage, we would throw back weak side. If it's a weak coverage, where he would roll up, then we would throw to the strong side. Our quick series is a three-step drop, throwing the ball right to left, depending on the coverage. The protection up front is a solid protection scheme with the two backs blocking the outside. Very effective part of our passing game, the quick series. Used it yesterday uh, with Jason Stargle with uh, some success, Dave. Well, Red, here Dan reads right to left, and he goes to the right side to Stargle. This is an out route. Uh, the quick series is very important. You must have a good quick release and good sure hands here. Jason makes a good catch with his hands, and we get a six, seven-yard gain here. That's their strong safety closing on it, so it was a weak side coverage. I think we'll get a chance to see one more now which the quarterback again has to make the decision from right to left. You'll notice uh, the back up top blocks to the right, and the back down the bottom blocks to the left. Again, McCoy looks right to left, makes a decision to throw the right, and you'll notice here this is a quick post. So we have an out route and a post route. Look at this fine catch. And I might add, this is good coverage by their defense. But again, a good first down play sometimes, and this was a good six yard gain. Jason caught the ball well yesterday. Uh, but it's imperative with the quick series that you have a guy who can really let it go. And Danny is not one uh, to be shy on the speed of the football. He can sling it. Well, he's got good velocity with the ball. A uh, uh, good quick arm uh, is needed on that. And he does keep a team off balance. It was homecoming yesterday. And I know that's uh, a lot of fun for the team. There were a lot of events around it uh, on campus. And there was uh, yesterday a lot of events prior to the football game. And as we see on the highlights of homecoming, friends, yeah, you'll have an opportunity to see the spirit of the UC campus. Even some congressmen made it down, Dave. Well, there's Congressman Lucan in the first car there. Uh, these are uh, parts of uh, homecoming that coaches don't get to see. Uh, <laughs> but there was a tremendous amount of spirit on the campus all week, and uh, we wanted the uh, viewers to look at some of the floats because of all the efforts. The fraternities and sororities stay up all night, all week. Uh, I hope they don't miss any classes uh, doing this, but there is a tremendous amount of spirit on campus. There's a big dance tonight, we might add, at the convention center, and uh, it's a showcasing of University of Cincinnati. There's a Q102 radio station. The involvement of the whole university beyond just the fact that uh, uh, it's a UC homecoming, the town's involved. Well, we felt that throughout the week, not only on the campus, but everywhere you went in the city of Cincinnati, uh, people were talking about uh, uh, homecoming. Uh, Bill Cosby's concert was so well received and did such a, a great job. And then the football game Saturday, uh, while we didn't win it, we wanted to make sure that we put on the best show possible and let the uh, fans uh, see the game. I might say the fans had a big part of that first half. 
They sure did, Dave. We'll be back with our final segment after we pause for these messages. It's no wonder people are a little afraid to ask a banker for a loan. Nice bank you have here. So, you want a loan, do you? <laughs> but borrowing money doesn't have to be an ordeal. At Central Trust, you can count on friendly people who want to make loans. You're all set. The boat's yours. Really? Central Trust, the bank that makes things happen. We are all afraid of the dark. And with good reason. More than 15 million crimes a year are committed in the dark. That's why communities all across the country are now fighting crime with light. They chose the high-efficiency street lamp, which operates on 11 cents worth of electricity a night. Electricity. What else gives us so much for so little? It's the power of choice. showdown between the colas, there's only one deciding factor. Great taste. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. <laughs> for your next business trip, let Provident Travel make your airline, hotel, and rental car reservations for you. For corporations, Provident Travel has ticket delivery, accounting data, and computer printouts, a toll-free 24-hour telephone reservation service, and corporate hotel rate are available to all business travelers. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, Provident Travel has a convenient ticket branch and all right parking near the airport and $150,000 worth of life insurance. For your next business trip or vacation, call Provident Travel at 621-4900. Provident Travel, 1000 Provident Tower. Welcome back, Bearcat fans. Dave, I think it's important uh, uh, to note that I know football coaches are grumpy as a devil after they lose, no matter who they've played, but as you get farther away from that loss, you begin building off of that, and there are so many positives off of yesterday's performance. Well, Red, you're right, and uh, we did have the largest crowd in UC history, and I, I'll tell you what, we heard them coming out of that locker room, and it was a Bearcat crowd. Uh, we've been in uh, stadiums where they've had 60, 70, 80,000, but they all belong to the other people, and I was really uh, pleased with the uh, efforts by the Cincinnati people in helping our football team. Our goal at the beginning of the year was to be better, and we are better right now. We're a better football team. Uh, we're uh, a better spirited uh, community, and uh, our, I was just pleased with homecoming, and and now we've got uh, one more game to get ready for. And that's going to be Miami. Miami, a football team that won yesterday, and we hope you can make it up to Jaeger Stadium in Oxford one week from Saturday when the Bearcats take on the Miami Redskins. They're off this Saturday, but one week from Saturday at Oxford. And join us next week for another edition of the Dave Curry Show. The Dave Curry Show has been brought to you by... Pepsi Cola, General Bottlers of Cincinnati, and by Cincinnati Gas and Electric, the Energy Service Company, and by Central Trust, your financial center, and by Provident Travel, managing travel everywhere under the sun. Choice is my choice. Include your name, address, and phone number and make